This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome back to this lecture on thermal unit operations. We are still dealing with distillation and rectification. We are also still in the way of deriving the mccabe tiele diagram and today we want to have a look at the second section of the distillation column, namely the stripping section. Now let's look where we find that. If we look at the overall distillation process or rectification process, we see as before that we have two sections, the rectifying section and the stripping section linked by the feed stage. And what we want to do now is we want to regard specifically the stripping section. To clarify the nomenclature, the last theoretical stage we are regarding is the capital N stage. And we want to cut again with our control volume somewhere between an arbitrary stage of the stripping section and then we want to be able to vary that again hopefully to wind up with some step construction. The flow rates of the vapor and the liquid in the stripping section are indicated by a prime to distinguish them from the fl corresponding flow rates in the rectifying section. We also have of course our bottom product B dot with the corresponding composition XBI. And of course the reboiler needs some reboiler duty, so we add some energy or power to the system Q dot B and that keeps everything running. So if we now look at the section uh, separately, the stripping section, we can set up a balance like this or define a control volume like this. Same as before, now we have the index n plus 1 here, so we are again cutting, like in the stripping section, uh, like in the rectifying section below stage number n, so that the next stage, since we are counting from top to bottom, is n plus 1. Then, of course, the composition of the liquid that is entering is coming from above, so that's coming from stage number n, and so we have to write here an xn. The vapor flow rate leaving here is, of course, carrying the index of the stage it's leaving, as is our name nomenclature, and that is yn plus 1i. The xbi and the xb dot I have just explained in the previous uh, slide, so we know that already. Again, we want to assume that everything is operating in steady state, so within everything is constant, the amount of substance of each individual component is constant, as well as the overall amount of substance correspondingly, so we can assume that nothing changes within because of this steady state assumption. That means that we can simply say that uh, the left side of the equal sign in the balance has to be zero. The right hand side consists then of those terms that represent what's entering. Entering is the L dot prime minus what is leaving and leaving is the G dot prime and the B dot. Just to recall that no reaction should be taking place so there is no additional term to be considered. Okay, now let's simply set up the corresponding balance and see what that leads us to. If we do that, well, what do we obtain? What did we say? We said steady state left side of the equal sign is zero. So zero equals what is entering minus what is leaving. Entering was the L dot prime minus the G dot prime minus the B dot. And this is, of course, cause for the overall flow rates. Okay, the second balance you want to set up is for an individual component I. Again, steady state also for each individual component. So zero equals L dot prime times the corresponding composition. The flow rate was coming from above, so from stage number N. So it is an XNI minus the G dot prime, the composition is in, uh, carrying the index of the stage where it is coming from, and that was coming from stage number n plus 1, so from within, of component i minus the b dot times the xbi. And that is, of course, the balance for component i. 
In principle, we would also be able to set up the energy balance, of course, but please keep in mind that we have used that already for uh, finding out or describing uh, that the g dot prime and the l dot prime are constant throughout each column section. So uh, that has been used and there's no actual value in adding that, that wouldn't give us any additional insight. Okay, so now with these two equations we do what we always do. We take the first equation, solve that, that for one variable, plug it into the second equation and see what we will be winding up with. The first equation we solve it for the g dot prime. So we can say g dot prime equals l dot prime minus b dot and we want to substitute this now in the equation above. So in here we substitute the g dot prime so we the first and the last term are just to be copied. So 0 equals first term equals l dot prime x n i minus now the substituted l dot prime minus b dot in brackets times the y n plus 1 i minus the copied term b dot times x b i. We see that we can achieve a similar uh, equation as for the rectifying section. We can solve now for the y n plus, n, uh, n plus 1, so we have to add or bring that to the other side of the equal sign and simply divide by this uh, bracketed term. And then we get again some equation that describes the dependence of y n plus 1 from the x n. So it is an y n plus 1 i equals. As I said, we have brought this to the other side of the equal sign, so we have uh, the l dot prime here, and we divide by the, this bracketed term so that this y remains only on the left-hand side. So it's now the l dot prime divided by this bracketed term, l dot prime minus b dot times the x n i, minus the same for the last term, it's the b dot divided by the l dot prime minus b dot x b i. And we can now already start to discuss this equation um, because we realize already that of course in steady state x b is a constant, the flow rates are constant, so this overall is a constant. We also see that the, as here of course the flow rates here are a constant as well, so that's a constant as well which means that we have y equals constant times x minus a constant. So it's again a straight line in the y-x diagram linking the y and the x of those flow rates that are meeting between the theoretical stages. Okay, so it's again an operating line. It gets a box. And this is the so-called stripping line. Again, we would like to describe that line based with or based on two um, points. For defining these po two points, we could in principle define a reboiler ratio like we have um, defined a reflux ratio, but we don't need that actually. And actually this would add only a dependent variable because the number of degrees of freedom of this overall problem is, uh, are limited, the number of the independent variables, and if we have defined all the outer volume flow rates, uh, as well as the reflux ratio, there is no more degree of freedom, so uh, we can do otherwise. We don't need that additional variable. So if you now scroll down a little bit, we want to determine two points. And, uh, well, what is the first point? We want to do the same thing as we have done before. For the rectifying section, we just said that the xni was the product composition, which means in this case, of course, the xbi. And then we look what happens. If we substitute the xb for the xn, then of course we can combine these two uh, terms and we would wind up with an l dot prime minus b dot divided by l dot prime minus b dot, which sounds pretty much as if it were exactly unity. So what we wind up with is that the yn plus 1i equals the xbi. So from that follows directly that the yn plus 1i equals the xbi. 
And from that follows that one of the points of the um, stripping line is a point where the y as well as the x both are xb, that is, it's a point on the diagonal again, at xb. So it's xb i xb i. That is a point, one point of the stripping line. Now, unfortunately, for determining the second point, we need quite some considerations about enthalpy, energy, and things like that for the feed. That's a little bit lengthy, so I put that into a separate video, and I would like to finish here, and the second point, so to speak, is then to be determined in the next lecture. With that, I nevertheless would like to return to the presentation and summarize what we have seen in this brief lecture. We saw that also the stripping section of the rectification column can be represented with a straight line in the y-x diagram. With that, I would like to thank you for this uh, lecture and see you again in the next video.